Alright, so welcome back to another video on how to become a business consulting freelancer, especially now looking at the practice we make based on the case of study when conducting a research and gather quality data. So, to make a quick recap of that, how to make a research and gather quality data. So, uh, Paul Mendes, which is the CO2 mastering structure from this course, he mentioned that data is something powerful and it's incredibly powerful because it can help you to influence, persuade, or inform, but also can be misleading. And this is important to acknowledge since identify where is the source of data from the most valuable and the least valuable, especially when you're conducting your research uh, to a consulting product, is important. So you have the first data or first party data, data that come from the company itself, secondary data, data that come from trust source, they have a proof of record, they're not anonymous, they have made some research report, peer review. And then you have the aggregate sources. This is the least valuable because you cannot verify the quality of the source. For example, you don't know or it is hard to know who the author really is, for example. But again, it's important to, uh, in case you're not able to access to their uh, data, the company's data, and if that industry that doesn't have any trust sources, okay, or, or there are few trust sources, uh, well, go and look at these uh, aggregate sources. But then I look at a broad perspective on how to conduct a research, like play them, I will get you yourself, because Things are not black and white. Gather quality and relevant data. This is something crucial, uh, especially that we are living in this uh, digital world where we definitely know how to do that. Uh, not only for conducting research, but only but also for uh, Pretty basically anything in your life based right now, uh, you might apply conducting a research for any field that you have interest or you think that you want to do. So, for example, if you take some vacations, you make a research for that. You know, you make a research. Uh, the other is. Uh, Yeah, I make a huge pause here. Um, because mm -hmm. I make a huge pause here because this is generally something that you can apply to any to anything in your life. And, and especially here that we have now access to this huge amount of data, okay? This galactic sea of data. It is very, very important to gather quality data. So play the advocate with yourself. Things are not black and white. Gather relevant uh, data, all right? Especially if you, uh, for example, if you want to 
know where is the best place to buy a laptop, for example, a motorcycle, book a, a house or a flight, you know, it is important now to more than ever, really, more than ever it is important to make this, uh, to conduct a research and know how to do that, not only for the business aspect, okay, but also for any aspect of your life. Another approach is that you can also see yourself as a business uh, and then conduct research based on things that you interest by. Uh, again, this is just ideas that I brought out here to kind of guide you what you want to do in your life, what you want to do, how to do that, and what you want to share or with who you want to share with. Right? Again, so yeah, uh, that's the reason why I take, where I took that long pause. Uh, it's like, yeah, but, but yeah, so yes, exactly. We can make that research on there. So in any case, right? Uh, now that I'm here, okay, at looking at how to conduct a research from a broad perspective and how can I apply that uh, to all aspects in your life. If you can see yourself as a business, that's another way to do that, or to put it. So, having at least this uh, topic to get a uh, from a broad perspective that play the advocates with yourself because things are not black and white. Also, gather relevant quality data, take notes, and keep record of every source you obtain. Uh, and then check the quality of those sources, right? So either is uh, if you have to look at their website, check out uh, for grammar errors or uh, if the design feels something a little fishy, uh, take that in consideration. And well, don't forget to circle back to the client. For this case, don't, don't forget to circle back with yourself about what is the end goal of this research. Okay. okay. That's that's fairly that's fairly good. That's really good uh, because uh, it's important to once you know something, focus is on the execution of that. So how can I apply this uh, from the pro professional perspective? Okay. Well, here what I'm applying or once I conduct this research. Now, based on this POC, okay, uh, POC commerce review and notes and strapi. So the whole idea here is to get myself familiar with the e-commerce sphere, and if I need to provide value to someone else or to a client or business, then we can talk in the same language. You know, pretty much that. So, all right. So the reason of uh, looking at a case study after I went through how to gather quality data and then how to perform a, a research, how to conduct a research, then a case study from uh, Paul Mendes where he des uh, described is how is his approach as a marketing when they analyze a website or when they analyze this, a particular client? In this case, a tourist client. So doing that, okay? Uh, first, they look at their website or the product and service uh, and understand what they offer. They look at your specific, okay? Uh, such as 
uh, the pricing, the categories, uh, how much is company uh, so what are the products and services of this company uh, the company review and what makes this company unique because all of this will be used in my consulting suggestions so once you can do a research based on the website brands you know, how much they charge uh, the offering uh, the price and um, service now it is time to go to the first part of the data you have access to that and see how this company has how this company have yeah to see how this company has performed as one look what this company has made in the past because this is something that I can use to to, that will help me to provide my suggestions and then once you look at the compare analysis especially to get a clear idea of what's going on in that industry to see who the other players are in that industry uh, yeah who the other players in that industry are in that area uh, see how you can learn from them yes yeah, so what you can learn from them uh, and then make a keyword research on that so take the keyword from the comparator analysis and take that to a keyword tools to get now this broad perspective of what's going on in that industry uh, and on top of that keyword research, now you look for a broad perspective, you look at the word news, because the, the whole idea is to keep, to get data uh, up to date, and question and ask yourself, hey, all this research that I'm doing, how can I apply everything that I research to what is most likely to work today and that includes look at their uh, regulations how this industry is adapting to regulations and where this industry is uh, and where this industry is going okay so with that guidelines right uh, that might be quite abstract at the beginning, but with that guideline of uh, looking at the website, then go to the specific, if you can have access to the first party data to understand what this company, uh, uh, to understand what they have done in the past, to see how they have been performing, and how you can uh, provide your suggestions based on that, so then you make a compare analysis to understand uh, who the other players in that industry are and see what you can learn from them by taking this keyword research into a keyword tool uh, or keyword planner from Google, for example, again, to get a clear idea of what's going on in that industry. And on top of that, what you're gonna do is look a research from a broad perspective. Look at the worst news to get up to date data from that and to know everything that I uh, research, what is most likely to work today, okay? So based on everything that I research, what is most likely to work today? And that includes Look at the regulations. Uh, yeah, that includes look at the regulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that includes look at the regulations, how this industry is adapting to regulations, and where this industry is going. So, 
I made that quick recap of these guidelines, similar as, for example, the value ladder. Again, that serves as a guideline. So with that, now, when looking at the POC e-commerce, or when making my own practice, uh, to understand or to make this, this research based on uh, this POC e-commerce with you and Knox and uh, with Strapi, okay? So to understand their concept and see how you can they combine to create uh, at least a POC for an e-commerce, okay? So e-commerce after all this is a transaction of goods and service according to Amazon. Uh, this is your bustling city center or your brick and mortar shop converting to zeros and want on the internet super highway. So Shopify mentioned that whether e-business refers to all aspects of operating an online business, e-commerce specifically refers to the transaction of goods and service on the internet. So where how can how can it be done? Yeah, I asked, right? And there are several ways of doing this, and there are several types of doing this transaction where you have this now uh, this different business model, such as uh, the business to commerce, the business to consumer. This is the most common uh, business model. So business to consumers is now consumers purchase good or service from uh, you know, online retailers such as Amazon, uh, Walmart, or Target. That's one example, okay? Online retailers, uh, digital marketplace where now consumers can purchase to individuals or small business for good and service in digital marketplace that business create such as Etsy or eBay. Subscription models uh, where consumers can subscribe monthly or yearly uh, to uh, meal delivery servers or an online uh, streaming such as Netflix or Spotify. So right now I'm subscribed to that with Spotify, for example, uh, I'm subscribed to Spotify and subscribe to the uh, yeah, I'm subscribed to Spotify and subscribe to uh, Zero to Mastery. Okay, that's my main uh, subscription right now. So I'm subscribed to that. Yeah, that's my main subscription. That's my main subscription. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's my main subscription right now. The other is. Um, online traveling. Uh, booking, so now consumers can book to a product. So now consumers can book to flights, uh, hotels, or car online in place like Expedia, Booking.com, or Airbnb. And the other is online food ordering and delivery, where our consumers can order food from restaurant online such as Grubhub, which is exclusively to the US, Grubhub, uh, Uber Eats, DoorDash. In Latin America, you have this uh, Rappi, Peditos Ya, among others, right? A lot of the money laundering business company. In any case, you also have this, another way to transact for goods and service online uh, is 
through business to business, where uh, business create a digital marketplace that allow business to transact goods and service, such as Amazon New Business, Alibaba, eBay Business, EDI, where things that were traditionally made on paper, such as purchase order or invoice, now they, they do that electronically and they can share within their company uh, or among other companies through IDI systems, electronic data interchange, EDI. You also have these online portals where very large business organizations uh, set up a online portal uh, Supplier or set up, yeah, set, up uh, set up a supplier an online supplier portals to streamline is their supply chain and uh, their procurement process. So proper procurement process is uh, things that a company or a business buy and sell at scale uh, with a good bid, such as Arriba SAP. So SAP Arriva Network or Walmart Supplier Center. You also have this wholesale e-commerce where now business such as manufacturers or distributors sell products to a business such as uh, Uline or Granger, right? And business to business payment uh, solution. So, payment providers, just PayPal and Stripe, provide these business to business payment solutions. So, business can receive or send money electronically. So, this is one uh, business model, this is one way how you can make that transaction. Okay? Uh, and the other is the consumer to business. So consumer to so now this is where consumers offer the products or service to business. So such as freelance work, okay, like freelance writing. Uh, yeah, such as freelance writing, you know, website uh, developer development. Uh, graphic design, in platforms like Upwork, Fiverr, or Freelance. Uh, also, you have is you now consumers can participate in online subscription or in online service for market research purpose, such as SurveyMonkey. Okay, so you have online uh, survey. Consumers can can sell their digital content, which has image, audio, uh, or video, in places like Shutterstock, iStock, or Audio Jungle from the battery. And consumers can drive funds for the private uh, and ideas in places like Indiegogo uh, or uh, Kickstarter, and also consumers can uh, submit price quotas uh, for some product or service in a reverse auction to business. So this business or this most common uh, way of in uh, transact, okay? this common business model, this common way of how uh, consumers and business make a transaction or trading electronically okay uh, now the other is uh, but with respect with government so with respect with governments uh, to business and government to consumer government to business so you have public uh, or the public procurementmental portals so now governments agencies, provide a online platform for business to bid on government contracts. If you have the FBO, 
for uh, United States or from the United States, the Federal Business uh, Opportunity for the UK is the Servers Finder, something like that. The UK is the UK government contract finder service. The UK government contract finder service. And again, public environmental like this, uh, they provide is uh, uh, so again, government agency provides online platform for business to bid on government contracts. So the other is tax filling and payment, right? Yeah, the other is tax feeling and payment. Mm -hmm. So tax feeling and payments, again, government agency provide is a tax feeling and payment system for business, such as the electronic federal tax payment system from the, U the U.S. or HM Revenue and Custom online service HM revenue and custom online service HM revenue and custom from the UK and HM what does it mean HM for them? HMRC HM With HM in custom Okay uh, The term Her Majesty You gotta be fucked Her Majesty Revenue and customs. <laughs> okay, refers to the tax authority of the UK government. The agency, also known as Her Majesty Revenue Service, is responsible for collecting tax paying child benefits, enforcing tax and custom law, and enfo uh, enforcing tax and custom law, and enforcing the paying of minimum wage to employees. Oh my god. Okay. HMRC was found in 2005 following the merge of the inline revenue and the board of custom exercise. The agency which formerly handled internal tax and custom collection respectively. So HRMC is a national tax authority in the UK. Um, HRMC is what is the IRS for the U.S. Uh, is the National Tax Authority, Her Majesty Revenue and Customs. Her Majesty Revenue and Customs. Yes. The agency administers administer all national direct and indirect taxes. In addition to enforcing law, tax law and collecting revenue, urgently. HRMC administered certain benefit and tax credit payment to the UK residents. HRMC was formed in 2005 through the merge of inland revenue, more custom, and excise. Mm. Okay, I barely hear about that. So, HRMC. Her Majesty Revenue and Customs is the tax authority on the UK, such as the IRS, on um, US, 
Seniat in Venezuela, Afif in Argentina, and you name it. So, oh, okay. No, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. So, I learned something very, very useful today, right? In the example of government to business. Okay, okay. So, in government to business, on the way of how this transaction happened, okay, or the transaction of good or service on the internet, in this case, between the government and business, you have the public procurementful portals where the government agency provides online platforms for gov for business to be on government contracts. In the federal business op opportunity on the US or the uh, UK government contract finder service. Okay? You have the FBO, which is a federal opportunity business, okay? Or the government contract finder. Like that. So tax filling and payment, okay? Tax filling and payment. Exactly. Exactly. Tax filling and payment. Okay. This is the public procurement portals. Tax filling and payment is that many governments agency provide tax filling and payment system to business, such as the electronic federal tax filling system or tax, the electronic federal tax payment system. In the U.S. or the HR, uh, the HM Revenue and Custom online service, and the HM Revenue and Customs is the National Tax Authority on the UK, similar as the IRS from the U.S., the Senat from Venezuela, the AFIT from Argentina. Uh, interesting. Okay. So, licensing and permit applications. So, business can uh, often apply for license and permits online. Exactly. So, so business can often apply for licensing, license and permits online. So this is licensing, licensing. Uh, licensing and permit application. So, businesses can often apply for license and permits online, such as food service license or building permits. Okay. Licensing and permit application. For example, if a business wants to, uh, if, for example, if a business bid to a government contract, and he won that, now he needs to apply to receive the uh, uh, license and permit. Mm -hmm. License and permit, or, or the building permit. Okay. Houston clearance and international trades. Custom clearance and international. What do you mean about custom clearance? What does it mean? About chat, GPT, OpenAI. What about this? In the accounting allowance? You can play this. To the process of completing the necessary paperwork and formalities required by country, custom authorities. To allow you to enter or exit the country. 
The person clearing process ensures goods that goods are correctly classified value and assets for taxes and duties, according for regulations of the importing or exporting country. The custom clearing process typically involves several steps, including preparing and submitting the requirement documents such as commercial invoice, package, and bill letter, paying any application custom duty, tax, and fees, inspecting the goods to ensure they comply with regulatory requirements and are not restricted or prohibited, obtaining any necessary permits or license, releasing the goods for delivery once they have being cleared by custom. Custom clearing can be a complex and time consuming process, particularly for companies that import or export goods frequently or deal with multiple countries. Many companies choose to work with custom brokers and custom brokers or freight forwards who specialize in navigating the custom clearance and process and can help ensure that you are clearing quickly and efficiently through custom brokers or freight forwards. What does it mean? Uh, freight forwards. Um, freight forward examples. DHL Global Forwarding. DHL Global Forwarding. Kihi Nagel is a global logistic company that specializes in ARC and road freighting forwarding, as well as contract logistics and supply chain solution expenditure. EPS supply chain solution. These are just few example of many freight forward are available. The specific freight forward that a company chooses to work will depend on the variety of factors such as type of goods being shipped to the destination country, the specific logistic needs of the company. Type of goods being shipped to the destination country and the specific logistics needs of the company. Mm -hmm. Again, five forwards. And then fight forward. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Fright. Fight forward. Mm -hmm. Fright. A burden or a burden a load. Goods carried by a vessels. Or vehicle, especially, especially by commercial carrier cargo, commercial transportation of goods, freight forward, freight forward, yeah, freight forward in the Spanish, freight forward, hand to carrier, okay. Fry forward, agente o agencia de transporte. Fry forward, ok. Flete. Fry, muy interesante. Ok. Agente de carga de agencia de transporte. The agency also known as mm 
HRMC. Mm -hmm. So there were there were several concepts that I learned today, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So custom clearance. Custom clear refer to the process completed. The necessary paperwork and formality required by a country custom of sort of to allow goods to enter or exit the country. So custom clearance refers to the process of completing the necessary paperwork and formality required by a country authorities to allow goods good to enter or exit the country. So in other words, an una aduana in Spanish. In Spanish, una aduana. So custom clearance uh, so custom clearance in Spanish exactly despacho de aduanas custom clearance okay interesting custom clearance clearance Custom clearance. Okay, un despacho personalizado, un despacho de aduanas. Custom clearance. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay, okay. Very, very interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, so, custom clearance is a necessary paperwork that uh, a company needs to do to or for their custom clearance tax or custom clearance authority in that in, in that government in that country so the custom clearance refers to the process of completing the necessary paperwork formality required by a country custom authorities Mm. So, country custom authorities in Spanish is la autoridad de, de, de agencia, la autoridad de agencia, la autoridad de aduana. Mm. La autoridad de aduana del país. Country custom authorities. So custom clearance refer to the process of completing the necessary paperwork required by a country custom authorities to allow goods to enter or exit the country. <laughs> interesting. Very, very interesting. An international trade. The governments provide an online service to facilitate cross-border trade. Such as electronic customs clearance, exactly. Such as electronic custom clearance or export declaration. 
And electronic custom clearance for export declaration. So business registrations and incorporation. Many governments allow business to register or incorporate online, such as company house in the UK or the US Small Business Administration. Business formation page. Business formation. Business formation page. So that'll be all for this video. And to make this quick recap of the government to business example, where you have public procuremental portals. Uh, so many portal, so many government agency provides a uh, online platform for business to bid on government contracts, uh, such as for the federal. So, to recap, we don't need to read about it. But to recap, so in the trade of goods and service between government and business can be uh, can be laid out on public procurementum uh, portals. So, government agency provides online platforms to uh, for to business for uh, cases so example of business to example of cons government to business is example to government to business of how this transaction happened right because after all what I'm doing here is just to make this quick recap of the e-commerce way of transact good and service between the government and the business. So you have public procurementful portals, government agency provides online platforms to go business for uh, to be on government contracts. Yes. So again <laughs> Example of government to business because here we're looking is uh, how how this how the exchange of good or service on the internet is done between the government and the business and the most common example you have public procurementful portals so government agency provide online platforms to business for big government contracts such as FBO, the Federal Business Opportunity in the US or uh, the UK Government Contract Finance Service. Now governments also can provide tax filing and payment systems to business such as the electronic federal tax payment system in the US or the HM revenue and custom okay revenue and custom from the uh, from the UK or on the UK and this HM uh, revenue and customs is a tax authority from the UK similar as the IRS on the US or the AFIP on Argentina, Semiat in Venezuela, among others. You also have is licensing and permits, so business can sometimes apply to get uh, licensing uh, to get license or permits such as food service or building permits, custom service in uh, international trades. So now government uh, provide online service to facilitate cross-border trade. When I look at the custom clearance is uh, it refers to the paperwork that uh, yeah, it refers to the, the minimal 
amount of paperwork that I come requires the minimal amount of paperwork a company expects like this okay so the custom clearance refers to the process of completing the necessary paperwork required by country's custom authorities to allow goods enter or exit the country mm -hmm. or exit the country such as electronic custom clearance or export declaration okay, so just electronic custom clearance or export declaration and then you also have business registration and incorporation so many governments allow business to register or incorporate online such as company house in the UK or the US small business administration business formation page and that'll be all for this video take care bye bye